Hey everyone, it's Jason here. Just wanted to quick throw up a quick disclaimer before we get into the meat of the episode. As you can see, Jeff and I are going to be uh, really talking a lot about Star Wars Fallen Order. So, I mean, you can expect full spoilers uh, for that game and pretty much everything that goes along with it. But, seeing as everything in Star Wars is ridiculously connected, there's going to be some slight spoilers for other things within, you know, the Star Wars universe. It's not anything too major, and I mean, you may have seen all of this stuff already, but I figured I'd just tell you, just in case. There's going to be some slight spoilers for the movies Rogue One, uh, Episode Nine, as well as just some of the big events that happen near the end of the prequel trilogy of movies. But, you know, that is about it. So, um, I mean, if you haven't seen those things, I don't know, may not necessarily be too big of a deal, but, you know... Just wanted to keep our consciences uh, clear about that whole thing. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of the episode. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Super Turbo 64. This is our special episode, How Did You Like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? I'm Jeff Ross, and this is Jason Vandervoort. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea how long I was waiting to do that. <laughs> like, just days in preparation, I was like, man, I'm going to open up with the Obi-Wan. <laughs> it's it's time. General Kenobi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> General Kenobi. No, I can't really do Grievous either. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, first you have to have four arms. Yep. Do you so, know if he started with four arms? I'm imagining he did. You know, that's a good question. Like, maybe, yeah, the, the race that Grievous, you know, that it is like... I think it might have four arms naturally. Mm -hmm. He he's more machine now than bug person. <laughs> Twisted and evil. Good thing they saved his vulnerable little heart. Exactly. You know, so it could be shot and destroyed. Mm -hmm. Oh no, my weak spot. <laughs> However, did you find it? How uncivilized. <laughs> oh my god, there's I I feel it. There's just going to be Reference after reference oh. throughout the entirety of this episode. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot, and I'm really excited about it. Good. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So, like Jeff's pointed out, this is gonna be our second episode in which we uh, delve deeply into a game that both of us have played. Mm -hmm. The first time we did that was with uh, Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. and now we're going into Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Yeah. Like, I either I mean, call I it think... Star Wars Fallen Order or Jedi Fallen Order. But to do all of it, it's like... Yeah, no. Nobody calls it Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. I... It's, it's. I think it's just Jedi Fallen Order. And most of the time when we refer to it, it's Fallen Order. Exactly, yeah. But just for the for the sake of just, you know, you know I, I dotting like I's and yeah. cross and T's, yeah, we're going to just, at least this one time, refer to it <laughs> in its full name. Just so that you know it's a Star Wars game. Exactly, yeah. In case the Jedi part didn't make it obvious. Jedi, what the fuck are those? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I... um, So I played this game just fairly recently. I beat it maybe just a couple of weeks ago now, but you played it like right at launch or, Not really. or pretty I, close. About a few months after launch, you... like four or five months after maybe. Okay. Um... I think it came out in the fall of 2019. Okay. And I played it in, like, February 2020, March 2020, something like mm, that. Right, because, yeah, that is there. right around when we started recording, if I'm mis yeah. not mistaken. Um, no, actually, I, January, I think that's when we started. So Okay. It was around then when I played it. So I guess, uh, yeah, in that region. Nice. But uh, I played it twice, you know, right away. I just, mm. when I played it through, I'm like, oh, that was awesome. Gotta go again. How yeah. did you like it, Chase? Dude, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Like, like I said, you know, um, I started this quite a bit later than you did. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, when the game first came out, you know, I was naturally interested in mm -hmm. it. But, you know, it had some things going against it. I'm sure. And that's namely the fact that EA was... Like, mm. at least somewhere surrounding it. A dark it. specter. Exactly. Like, you know, EA's reputation for making Star Wars games was pretty bad. Yeah. You know, after um their second Battlefront. Mm-hmm. 
you know? And so it's like, I want, and the launch of the game, there were some bugs and whatnot. Yeah, which, there was, that was like my biggest delay into getting an yeah, idea how buggy it was, you know? Exactly. So like those kind of two combinations, mm-hmm. that kind of held me off from playing it right away, Yeah, you know? But it was just one of those things where I was just thinking, you know, maybe when it's patched, you know, it, I'll mm-hmm. play it. But it's just like, even despite the fact that it had some bugs and problems, mm-hmm. the reception for the game was still really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it even was, though EA like was... Like a... Came from... Cool. It was like a surprise, basically. Absolutely. You know, like that, oh, there's a good Star Wars game out? You know? That's um, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I remember our friend Andrew talking about it, and he was like... Yeah, the game has, like, Dark Souls elements to it and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, interesting. Exactly, yeah. And, and like we were kind of mentioning in the last episode, you know, we were talking about Dark Souls for a while. Like, mm-hmm. whereas, you know, you are a pretty big Dark Souls fan. I would still list Andy as, like, our resident mm-hmm. Dark Souls expert, guru, mm-hmm. like, whatever. Yeah, for sure. He's just he's just very, very uh, into it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so for him to kind of, you know... I think he was, yeah, like the first adopter out of our group to play it. I don't know if he played it. I know he was watching it when at the time oh, on streams okay. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he ever did play it, but um, either way, it sounds like he he had the seal of approval. For sure, it. and that's a that's a good thing to have. Yeah, that's right. If Andy approves of the game, it's, yeah. it's worth playing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it was. It really Absolutely. Was. Yeah, and it's made by the people who do the uh, Titanfall games. And yeah, that's Respawn. Respawn, yeah, thank you. And they also did uh, Apex Legends. Yeah. You know? So um, it's like they are, you know, they've got mm-hmm. a pretty good track record. Whereas, like, whereas EA, their track record is pretty bad. Respawn, theirs is pretty good. So it's like yeah. there's balance. Yeah. <laughs> like the Force. Ah. Uh-huh. Ah. Um, there's our first... Or fifth reference, I can't count. Fifth um, reference within six minutes. Good. This is going to be a um, good day. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, I've probably talked about this on the podcast before, mm-hmm. but, like, I, uh, Respawn has, like, a... It's especially interesting to me because mm-hmm. they the founders of Respawn made Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, mm-hmm. and then they went on to make Titanfall next, and then... I believe the founders left, but the company is still pretty good. You know, they right. made Titanfall two, which was excellent, mm-hmm. and then uh, Apex Legends. Everybody likes that. Yeah, apparently, I, I like it. I do too. Yeah, it's just battle royales are hard for me to kind of stick with. Yeah, you know, but and, through the yeah. time that we played it, I'd say it's probably the battle royale that we've gotten the most enjoyment. I mean, you've been you've I've been, been getting a lot, lot of Warzone. Warzone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's the one that I probably got the most enjoyment sure, out of. Sure. Um, so all in all, you know, Respawn's got a good track record. Like exactly. And, um, it, so this is their first non FPS also. Right. And, uh, I was just looking at one of the wikis today. They said that they were developing a, uh, a different game with like the traversal mechanics of Fallen Order mm. when they were tasked to do a Star Wars game and they just kind of combined the two. Right. You can feel that the game is kind of a mishmash of a few different things. Like, you know, we were saying earlier, the combat is inspired by Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. So is um, kind of how it handles its uh, save points and its level progression. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's, uh, exploration, platforming, and light puzzle elements definitely feel... Like, you've got the the wall running and whatnot from Titanfall. Mm-hmm. But there's other elements that really feel like Uncharted yeah. to me, you know? Like and Tomb Raider stuff. Yeah, basically. yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And it's like, it's an interesting combination of styles that once you put them all together, you're just thinking, this is great. It's got a good pace to it. Exactly. You know, you're the alternating between uh, the fighting and the... Mm-hmm. The traversal is pretty fun. Yeah, the no element mechanics... really stays overstays its welcome. No, you know? definitely. And I would say, like, there's almost like one puzzle area. You know what I mean in the game. Like, there's that yeah. section with the balls in uh, right. That one. What, I've got it written down is here. That Zepho. It might be Zepho. Um, yeah, that's uh, a. Like, yeah, it is Zepho. Uh, it's 
like other than that you know it's mostly just as long as you can traverse it you can make you know there's not a lot of puzzle solving to do it mm-hmm. so it has some metroidvania aspects to it too mm. <laughs> i love that when it, i feel like metroidvania is one of those things where if you mention to me that it's an aspect of the game mm-hmm. i will just be you know, like go that's, on yeah and that's one of your it really your is words. it's definitely yeah one of it it automatically usually puts up a game mm. up a notch for me. Nice. And yeah, this is another game that handles it, you know, really well mm-hmm. with kind of the way it kind of slowly uh, gives you power ups, not even really giving you. It's more like returning them to you, yeah. which we can kind of as we it's dig like, more into the story, mm-hmm. we'll kind of go into that more. But you almost always are able to go back to a planet that you've explored before and uh, I don't know, uh, experience more of it find some secrets find some shortcuts it's just a Mm -hmm. the exploration of the game is just immensely satisfying yeah and rewarding um giving your power-ups back that's an aspect taken from metroid really absolutely like sam has always seems to like break her suit in the first 10 minutes of the game i you know it's funny i wrote about that briefly in my notes and i you know it's kind of a funny trope that you kind of associate yeah. with the genre now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, especially with Samus in particular, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, this lady is the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, <laughs> but apparently all of her equipment is garbage. <laughs> Nothing it, seems to hold up. It really doesn't. The, uh, yeah. Just the, you know, spaces hazards. Do you think when she's on vacation, she like loses all of her luggage at the baggage <laughs> claim? Just like, God damn it. Not again. <laughs> She has to, like, crawl around beaches and stuff just to... F- oh, there's my hat. <laughs> there it is. Oh, my gosh. Now I need sunglasses. Oh, adult- oh God. Is my umbrella really <laughs> in the scuba diving course? Oh, oh that's the last thing I want to do with <laughs> yeah. my vacation. She just wants to hang out. Exactly. It's the same thing in Castlevania. I think, yeah. especially in, like, uh, Symphony of the Night. You know, mm. you start out the game, you've got all of your power-ups... Mm-hmm. And then you walk into the castle and death shows up and he's just like, no, I'll take all of those. And you actually see all of the power-ups, like the icons mm-hmm. for him that you had before he's mm-hmm. like, nope, they're mine now. <laughs> it's just, oh no, I'm, it's, a, it's a nice thing to kind of have, like, show the, the uh, things the, that you are going to be able yeah. to do and, and, you know, kind of mm-hmm. grow uh, steadily more powerful throughout the course of the game. Yeah. But sometimes it can be a little funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, bordering on ridiculous, especially right. when you lose them all of the time. <laughs> yeah, and you don't, in this one, you get them back, but you don't get to play with them before you lose them. It's, right. That happens before the story starts, exactly. you know? Yeah. Um, you're basically just an out-of-practice teen. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. No, like you, yeah, to kind of start going into the story a little bit, you know? So, mm-hmm. Fallen Order takes place, uh in between the prequel trilogy of Star Wars and the original trilogy. And it's like that period of time in Star Wars is mm-hmm. really interesting because it's, it's gold mine. It really is, yeah, because it's this interesting kind of transition of power mm-hmm. between the two. And also it's, you know, it's exploring this whole thing about, you know, the Empire as it, you know, really kind of starts to really kind of assert its dominance throughout the entirety of the galaxy. Yeah. And so there's a bunch of stories that you can tell within it. Mm-hmm. But what's kind of funny and interesting in the fact is like, you know, going into playing Fallen Order or saying like watching something like Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. which also takes place in the same time, you kind of realize it's just, okay, you can have a story that will be complete, but at the same time, you really you really won't see that there's going to be much that changes. Because, I mean, when you watch the original trilogy... You know, right? The evil empire is. Still they are there. still very much yeah. there. Absolutely. So you get like a. You can't make the plot of the game be you know to kill the emperor basically. <laughs> no, you really um, can't. But he can come back at any time. You know, <laughs> we've learned that thanks to episode nine. Yeah, we really have. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Uh. It's a. I have to apologize. Mm-hmm. I you were totally right about Mandalorian taking place after oh, okay. um, <laughs> the second trilogy. I don't think you had any doubt, but I just like I was 
confused. I looked it up later. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. See, Jeff, yeah. doubt and confusion, they're okay. It's just part of your journey. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to embrace it. Yeah, trust only in the Force. Absolutely. <laughs> you got it, Pat, Master. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, like, so, again, going kind of back to the story, mm-hmm. you know, you, um, you're you playing as Cal Kestis, yeah. who, you know, was a Padawan, mm-hmm. and um, he's basically been uh, in hiding since Order 66 and the Jedi yeah. Purge. And so he was, he's been living on this planet, which is basically just one giant yeah. scrapping operation. I believe it's called Braca or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, it's a very cool environment, that mm-hmm. Braca, you know, it's mm-hmm. got... These enormous, like, fl- flagships of, like, all these just giganto things that you're crawling around, climbing mm-hmm. up and down just to navigate through this junkyard planet. Yeah, like, you see some old ships that mm-hmm. kind of look, you know, kind of like the thing that were, uh, like, the precursors to the Star Destroyer, or just that stuff that yeah. you saw during the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so you get to kind of see what happened to those things. And the planet also has those giant monsters that are kind of like Sarlaccs. A little mm. bit. Just, you know, these big, giant worm monster things. <laughs> you know, just uh, just got to make it interesting, right? Exactly, yeah. But now you're, you are on this planet and just kind of going about your life. You're just, he's, Cal is just keeping his head down. Mm-hmm. Because basically any indication that there's still force-sensitive people mm-hmm. um, in the galaxy, the Empire is basically, you know, hunting, hunting them down. down. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. I mean... One of the things that, again, going kind of back to how, you know, the, this time in between trilogies, mm-hmm. it points out the fact that, you know, Order 66 and the Jedi Purge, you know, it wasn't just, that's Instantaneous. it. Yeah, they yeah. kind of made it seem that way in the third movie or episode right. three, but uh, after, you know, you watch, like, uh, Rebels and you watch uh, the... What is it called? The Clone Wars, and mm-hmm. uh, you end up seeing that like it's there's survivors. Basically. It is, yeah. I mean, they're they're few and far between, yeah. and I think that kind of lends itself to that whole thing where it's just you know it makes it more believable. You know, kind of going in from the prequel trilogy to the original. You can, I don't mm-hmm. know. You can kind of see the the way the gap is kind of bridged. Yeah. But yeah, so like Cal and his buddy, whose name escapes me. Uh, like, they're just kind of going about a job, and that's when it's the game is teaching you, you know, some of the traversal stuff and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, um, you, your buddy is, like, is involved in an accident. Mm-hmm. And Cal, you know, reaches out with the Force to save him. You know, it's yeah. a do-or-die situation. Yeah, he's you know? falling from a ship, and yeah. Cal rescues him by making him float. Exactly, yeah. And, um, so... Your buddy, you know, he, you know, realizes right away. It's just, just like, happened. yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's just like, holy shit, you know, you're a Jedi. And Cal mm-hmm. is like, no, man, be cool, be cool. Like, this is, let's not, let's yeah. not make a thing of this. Right. But, and it feels like, you know, 20 minutes after you rescue him, <laughs> the Empire knows. It's just yeah. like, there's some droid that sees it happen. Like, yes, an Imperial, that's it. Uh, spy yeah. droid. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, so just, there's really, no time at all, and then boom, the Empire shows up. Yeah, and it they bring um, uh, the Inquisitors there, which are another mm-hmm. kind of faction within the Empire that you really never see or yeah. really even hear about in the movies. But they were invented in Rebels. Actually. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool that they uh, they brought them back and included that into the mm-hmm. the, sh- uh, the game that we were playing. But exactly, and it's like it's they're a perfect um organization to have in fallen order and they're just such an awesome counterpoint Mm -hmm. to cal and just you know they're the thing that they're seeking out to do and what you're seeking out to do just stand at such polar opposites of each other right yeah and it just i don't know an immensely satisfying thing but you know we'll be getting more into the inquisitors well it seemed like they're a good like you said they're a good counterpoint it's a perfect villain for these this uh in between trilogies time mm-hmm. because they don't show up in the the Ridge Tridge at yeah. all. So you uh if they're all gone by the time that 
episode four starts, you know, then it's probably because uh, people like Cal or mm-hmm. you know the the folks and rebels or whatever right. managed to take do care of some them all. nasty biz. Right. Yeah. Which granted, you know, neither Jeff or I uh, have watched Rebels. You have. Though... I've seen about two of seasons. Oh really? Dang you! Mm-hmm. You've seen a lot more than I thought. And I see now. I think there's five seasons. All okay. Here. Now, after wa- playing Fallen Order, I want to watch Rebels. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's something that it's cool because it's not as a uh, serial or like it's more serial than episodic. Um, oh, than Clone Wars. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so you follow. It's funny. Like, uh, we'll talk about it. I'm sure, but like, um, I think after at some point somebody realized over at Star Wars HQ, which is now, you know, inside of Disney HQ. Right. Um, they're like, we have to have the family unit, which is, like, you got your Jedi, mm-hmm. you got your, like, uh, your alien sidekick, you got your, uh, um, like, some kind of bounty hunter person, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Morally gray protagonist. Yeah. You know, these people that, uh, like, there's only three dudes at first in the, uh, in the Mantis's, mm-hmm. uh, crew, but, mm-hmm. uh, there's, like, five in Rebels, but, like, uh, so you end up with, like, a Mandalorian as well in mm-hmm. Rebels, and, like, uh, but, anyway, I forgot where I was going it's with just this. It's the but... Star Wars nuclear family. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, you need that to have, like, that, uh, that feeling of, like... Oh, the droid, the the wacky funny the, droid. The That's wacky the one funny I droid. Yeah. Yep. Um, they were kind of missing in the prequel trilogy, you know. A little bit, yeah. It was uh, so uh, that nuclear family or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you get that in the sequel trilogy as well with yep. like uh, BD one, Poe and BD and yep. like your uh, um and Finn and all that, mm-hmm. you know, just like uh, you get. <laughs> This group of people that, like a ragtag group of rebels, that seems to be the core, core like, family st- of yeah, Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. I mean, even Mandalorian has that at times. Oh, yeah. Like they're not all together at the same time, mm-hmm. but like various episodes, you know, will kind of create it from time to time. Right. They draw out characters from that family. Or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So yeah, we let's start kind of going into them because mm-hmm. yeah, like you know, the Empire shows up. Mm-hmm. pretty quickly and you meet your first inquisitor the second yeah. sister right and, and the second the ninth sister is there too the ninth yeah the ninth sister is there but you know it's primarily you know about mm-hmm. that and so the second sister uh kills your buddy and it sparks or something hmm Quar is that his name something yeah I, I really don't remember unfortunately but um and it triggers this huge uh kind of early set piece chase scene which yeah. is super fun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got your lightsaber, which is cool, and it introduces you to the combat right away. Mm-hmm. And um, it's you get one of those fun things where near the end of this, you um, you fight the second sister. And it's one of those er- classic things, kind of like we were talking about in mm-hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, you yeah. know, where you have this early boss fight. Yeah, where you that just get you, your ass handed you, to Yeah, you. exactly. It, one of those unwinnable fights. And um, so then... Like I said, it's an unwinnable fight, and so Cal is about to get, you know, killed, and he's rescued um, mm-hmm. by uh, uh, Sir Junda and Grease Drydus on the mm-hmm. Mantis, and that's their ship. So Cal wakes up, you know, basically is saved by them. Now, Sir is, she's also a former Jedi um, yeah. master. She mm-hmm. was kidnapped during the Jedi Purge mm-hmm. and tortured. And as a result of that, you know, her connection to the Force is, you know, like, damaged. She's essentially closed off from the Force. Yeah. Which is a similar thing to what Cal is going through because, right. you know, he... I mean, Cal is essentially going through PTSD about, you yeah. know, what happened during Order 66 and the Jedi mm-hmm. Purge. And as a result of that, like, all of his Force abilities are pretty yeah. much closed off to him. Mm-hmm. And that's where we were kind of mentioning early on with kind of the uh, uh, Metroidvania element. Mm-hmm. And it's for this game, it's probably one of the best things that I've experienced where they've contextualized that 
like the gameplay and the story connecting in such a yeah. way that you know feels really rewarding to the player and i just wanted to touch briefly before we got too far past it like mm-hmm. on the body that sacrifices himself like that's what happens it's like yeah it it really sets the tone i think that like cal is living like a borrowed life in the sense that yeah you know, he, first cal is like i you know i'll reveal myself as a jedi for my buddy and then the buddy when they're being like uh inquisited for the lack of a better mm-hmm. word um when they're being uh, interrogated to as a group to see like who's the jedi and mm-hmm. one of them like the buddy walks up he's like it's me you know to try and sacrifice himself yeah and, uh yeah anyway cal tries to save him and all that but mm-hmm. again but it's just a it's a way of like you know showing that Cal owes his life to the people that, you know, that protected, protected him. him. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, like, uh, Sarah and Grease, you know, they find Cal and mm. they're like, hey, you know, we have a, uh, we kind of have a plan or we have a thing that we want to do. Like, we're, we are attempting to essentially bring back the Jedi Order. Mm-hmm. And so Seer has this thing where she knows about this, uh, this old, uh, Jedi Temple, mm-hmm. and her form, her master, um, Cordoba. yeah, Cordova, like he was kind of studying this place before mm-hmm. the purge happened, and so, so she's aware of it, and so mm-hmm. what she she's under the impression that you know this temple holds a uh, a holocron, yeah, you know, which is for maybe for people who don't know necessarily, it's basically like an external hard drive for Jedi. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and it contains the locations of uh, force sensitive children mm-hmm. throughout the galaxy. So, like, in the hands of, say, Cal and the crew mm-hmm. on the Mantis, it's the ingredients to essentially start rebuilding the Jedi Order. Right. But if the Inquisitors were to find it, yeah. you know, it's like the last nail in the coffin for the Jedi Order. Right. So, Cal is like, okay, like you pointed out, Jeff, he was living a life that was borrowed. Mm-hmm. You know, and he had no purpose. He had basically just been hiding and he was just kind of in a complete, you know, stasis. Mm-hmm. But now he has kind of a purpose mm-hmm. and he sees that this is something that he can do. Yeah. And it's kind of like his uh, call to action. And that's something I really like about the protagonist, Cal, is that he um, he has a good heart. You know? He does, yeah. It's like, uh, it's so many... Uh, heroes in these video games we play these days are anti-heroes. They're like, you yeah, know, grizzled. jaded. Yeah. yeah. He's not jaded so much as just defeated. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, he, but he sees his chance for retribution, sort of. And he just takes it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. No, the game was, the game is not afraid really at any time to showcase, like, mm-hmm. not only Cal, but basically all the characters in the game, like, showcase how their lives were changed and impacted yeah. by Order 66. That's true. And uh, so, I mean, lots of people were just totally destroyed by that. But yeah. um, I I just feel like the game itself has, like, this optimistic tone to it throughout it. Yeah, for where, sure. Um, they There's this sense of, like, we're actually doing it. We're, you know, we can mm-hmm. beat these guys mm-hmm. as you're playing it. But... Yeah, that's one of the things that I've always enjoyed about Star Wars in general Mm -hmm. is, you know, despite how pretty much through most of it, you know, there is just these overwhelming odds. Mm -hmm. There's still this element of optimism. Yeah. And again, going back to kind of your ragtag Star Wars nuclear family, Mm -hmm. there's that optimism. And it's just like, hey, even a band of misfits can. Yeah. And I mean, that's essentially what Rogue One was all about. It was an entire movie of that. Exactly. And um Yep, Rebels has that same attitude, you mm-hmm. know, and um, it's it's cool. It's, yeah. Uh, it's definitely a theme for the series, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just, for me, it works out just really well and suits the series yeah. very well. And it's just one of those core ingredients that I think makes Star Wars, mm-hmm. you know. So, like, sometimes you hear about people saying, like, does this feel like Star Wars? Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the ingredients that you need to have mm-hmm. to really kind of... Yeah, make it Star Warsy. Star Warsy, absolutely. So, continuing with the journey, 
uh, Cal and the group on the Mantis, they go to the planet of... So you have the... Yeah, the first you talking about the planet that they meet uh, Cordova's ghost, basically. Yes. And uh, yeah, what is that planet called? I've um, got it. I, I should, thought I had uh, it written. But uh, they, it's a nice Bogano. Borgano, Bogano. Yep, yes. Bogano. And uh, it's, it's a fairly, it's a, <laughs> it's an interesting planet. And in you know, it's got nice green pastures, mm-hmm. but with the uh, fissures through them. Yeah. And. Uh, so it's sort of like these tunnel-like systems as you mm-hmm. approach this uh, obelisk. Temple. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, it's a it's the first time that the game truly opens up and gives you that exploration mm-hmm. that you know that we were mentioning at the very beginning. Yeah, and you, and right away as you get in there, and like you said, you encounter like Anova's ghost mm-hmm. essentially, but you meet him through the droid, BD, BD, no. yeah, BD one, and again, yeah, it's. He's one of those last ingredients Absolutely. that you need. Yeah, yeah. You and BD One is adorable. Yeah, he's a plucky sidekick. He for Cal, absolutely is. You know? Yeah. So BD uh, has a series of you know bits of information, um, like yeah. And so the it's not necessarily a force ghost, but he does like a projection mm-hmm. of Cordova. So you get the you learn that you know BD One had been following Cordova mm-hmm. and that's how you kind of get that early impression of like okay this uh the Zepho that's okay, yeah that's they the were old, the race that yeah. Cordova was studying and they were mm-hmm. like kind of a race of force sensitive uh yeah they were like they worshipped the uh the force yeah, yeah exactly and you find out that the Zepho had temples in on various planets mm-hmm. and so you realize that you have to gain access to this holocron by basically going through these temples and getting what are essentially keys yeah. to get there. So, boom, there you've got your you've got your adventure and you've got your game. So, and on that first planet, you find an enormous frog. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, I want to say his name is like Pog. Something. I think it's Ogdo Bogdo. Ogdo Bogdo. That's it. Yeah. yeah. He is one of the toughest fights in the game. Yes. Because you don't know how to play yet, really. You right. Know, at the sense, in a sense. So, like, for me, it was just, like, bashing my head against Ogdo Bogdo over and over. Mm-hmm. It's funny. The first fight and the final fight, those are the hardest bosses in the game. Ogdo yeah. Bogdo is, like, a mini boss. that he. Yeah. And he's guarding, like, a chest with, like, a some kind of... Like, like a lightsaber uh, hilt or something, you like, know? Yeah. I want to say it was a... Uh, uh, a poncho color. Yeah. You know. So the <laughs> reward, maybe not the equivalent of the challenge, but yeah. yeah, it's funny. So yeah, I, when I was exploring, mm-hmm. uh, Bagano and I fought Ogdo Bogdo, that's a really tongue twister of a sentence, by the <laughs> way. Um, I, you know, I only fought him the one time. Yeah. You know, maybe got like a third through his health bar mm-hmm. and I'm just thinking, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, and I barely, re- I didn't even return to that area throughout the course of the remainder of my game. Oh, really? And so then after I beat the game, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, let's keep playing. Let's explore. Mm-hmm. I go back to Bagano mm-hmm. and I just wipe the floor with Ogdo Bogdo. Oh, nice. And I'm just like, I am powerful. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was great. Because awesome. I, because I, the fight against him originally was still kind of fresh in my mind. Because it's not yeah. an essentially long game. No. But. But I was so I was able to remember how difficult that was. Yeah, and I was able to you know mm-hmm. really have the satisfaction. And you had by that time you had like five stim packs or whatever. Yes. You got like a longer health bar, and you got like you know all these skills. It's good. Yeah, it is really really good. Um, so you 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 start kind of going on your journey uh proper, and let's see. So you go there, find the holocron. Zepho. Yeah, so your next planet is Zepho. Yeah, you're given the option to go to Dathomir, but they're like, don't go there, it's scary, but yeah. you can if you want to. Exactly. I think I actually went to Dathomir first. Oh, yeah. and Did you get the, the double lightsaber immediately then? I didn't, actually, okay. yeah. So I was exploring, and I encounter this dude in a, ro- in a black robe, mm-hmm. which is never a good sign in Star Wars. <laughs> So, like, even though he's really nice to you, I'm just mm-hmm. thinking, 
No, buddy. Yeah. Come on. You are clearly going to be a bad guy. Right. And then just you just... Just a stranger. Don't yeah. Mi- don't mind me. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I couldn't explore any further. I needed a force ability that I didn't have yet. Okay. So I believe that you can get that lightsaber as soon as you want to. Really? Yeah, I just um, must have it's missed just, it. Yeah, it's like right after you talk to the hooded guy, yeah. there's like a ladder elevator mm, down. That sounds that, about right. Uh, sword, lightsaber, right. whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you you're then you go to Zeppo mm-hmm. and um the Empire has set up a dig site there. Yeah. And so you go to you go to Zeppo a couple of times mm-hmm. throughout the course of the game. And so each time, you know, you get a little bit farther um, mm-hmm. through the Imperial dig site. Mm-hmm. And um, the first time you do that, that's where you encounter the basically most puzzle heavy portion of the game. Yeah. The the ball thing <laughs> yeah, that you were yeah. mentioning. Yeah. And that's when you get your first force ability returned to you, right. which is force push. push. Yeah. yeah. And what's cool is each time uh, a force ability comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you get like a a flashback yeah. of Cal as a Padawan, mm-hmm. um, basically first learning the ability mm-hmm. uh, from his master, yeah. whose name Jaro Tapal. Jaro Tapal, thank you. Yeah. yeah, so it's cool because yeah, you get a little bit of insight. Of, like it's mm-hmm. a, one of the best ways that I've seen of tutorializing how to get your your mm-hmm. power. And so, yeah, you uh, you go to Zepho, you get the thing, but then, as will happen through a couple of times, you kind of encounter, like, a, uh, a roadblock on the planet. Right. And so, after and then, you... Yeah, they the tell per- you that, like, oh, we're getting heavy chatter as well. That yeah. Now you need to get back up here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then, from there, you go to Kashyyyk, which is the Wookiee homeworld. Yeah. And the Empire have also set up something nasty there, <laughs> in which case they're... I even, I kind of even forget what the heck they were looking for, but they've essentially they're they're trying to subdue the Wookies into slavery. Yes, and, right. Uh, Saw Guerrera. Yep, is there mm-hmm. uh, to, with his partisans in order to help mm-hmm. fight off the uh, Imperial menace. Yep, it's uh gotta say, starting off, you uh, immediately take control of a uh, of a. AT, AT. AT Walker. Yeah. And, uh, that's pretty fun. It is a very fun section as you just mowing down yeah. stormtroopers in this mm-hmm. enormous robot. Yeah, the game is really good in how it gives you these occasional really big memorable set pieces to kind yeah. of break up your, I don't know, your typical kind of gameplay mm-hmm. uh, loop. Yeah. But yeah, you then you get to explore uh, Zeppo. Kind of, you... Yeah. You Kashyyyk, that's it, Kashyyyk my dad. And, um, make buds with uh Sagarera and the partisans. Mm-hmm. Uh and you get to free some Wookiees. Exactly. You know? Uh they're grateful for you, you know. Um it's a it's a good time. Mm-hmm. They um that section, you know, also included like another mini boss, uh like a spider mini boss. Uh, that took me a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that time I was committed that I could do it, yeah. you know, because I think the first time I fought him, I maybe got a little over half to maybe the final third, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking, I got this. I, yeah. I can do this. There's, like, three or four of those enormous creatures in the game, and they, yeah. uh, they help, like, they give you an achievement for that or yeah. something, you know, which is mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, what happens next? So, War once you, master. yeah, once you go through uh, and you go to Kashyyyk, uh, you are able. You go back to Zepho. Yeah. And so you get you get a little bit farther mm-hmm. through the Imperial dig, and um, you know things are going well, but then you uh, are essentially uh, an amb- ambushed by the second sister, mm-hmm. which after your first kind of proper boss fight with the second sister, mm-hmm. uh, you discover that uh, the second sister is Trilla. Mm-hmm. who was uh Sare's Padawan. Yeah. So that, you know, just kind of makes things a little bit more complicated. Right. And she says Sare will betray you as she betrayed me, you know. Yeah. Which is just, you know, that's that's classic Star Wars, you know? Again, it's uh you have another thing of like 
most pretty much throughout the entire like Skywalker saga and most of the stuff surrounding it, pretty much every dark side force user that you encounter was usually a Jedi, like yeah. at some point, but through the through some action, mm -hmm. you know, falls to the dark side. Uh she Yeah, and, and that whole doubt, you know, yeah. like uh, it's interesting, like, it doesn't really pay off, you know, which is good mm -hmm. at the same time, but you kind of learn why she had that, uh, you know, sense of betrayal exactly. later on in the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you get that convenient discussion with her between a force sh uh, shield that... Which, yeah, it was pretty cool know. that BD-1... BD-1 essentially saves your life, you mm -hmm. know? Like, she gets the upper hand in the fight because she's still, you know, more powerful than you. Right. And, yeah, she would have killed Cal, but then BD-1 hops to it and, like, sets yeah. up a force field. So, um, very, very mm -hmm. cool and tense scene. And it, like, you know, it, as you're able to progress a little bit farther after that fight, you know, Cal is understandably upset with mm -hmm. Sarah. I don't yeah. think if maybe, yeah, I don't think how, you know, she obviously didn't tell him that Trilla, mm -hmm. you know, uh, was the second sister. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, kept certain aspects of her imprisonment at the hands of the Empire, like, Yeah, secret. she explains why she shut herself off from the Force. It turns out it's not something that happened to her. Mm -hmm. It's something she chose it's to do. It's cho a choice, yeah. Um, and it's, she, uh, you know, sees, it was like see, seeing Trilla... Uh, mm -hmm. As an Inquisitor was the thing that set her off, and she briefly fell to the dark side as yeah. she like escaped from prison. Yeah, like she, yeah, she used the dark side to like yeah. free herself and get out. And then after that, she's like, "Nope, yeah, I'm out," mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's like it's a very monistic choice, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, absolutely, monk-like choice. So good for her, mm -hmm. you know, to. to at the, to block herself off from the force, mm -hmm. you know, in order to not fall to the dark side. Exactly. Um, yeah, Cal at that point is a little, like, peeved. Understandably. And it doesn't help because on his way back to the Mantis, after escaping from Trilla, he's he's captured, mm -hmm. you know, by, uh, by bounty hunters. And the bounty hunter looks kind of like a heavily modified uh, clone trooper. Yeah, they got, like, power armor. Yeah, kind. yeah. And so he's captured, and he's held on a, um, I don't even remember the name of the world, but, you know, you're mm -hmm. captured, separated from your lightsaber in BD-1, mm -hmm. and once you get all those back, you find yourself, you're essentially in, like, a coliseum. Right. Um, and uh, you're fighting your way through the coliseum mm -hmm. before the mantis, you know, just bursts crashes in, yes, yeah. to save you. And you find out that, you know, the... This happened because of, you know, greed is essentially... Had gambling debts. Yeah. He had gambling debts, yes. <laughs> so, like, back to back, Cal has reasons to be upset, yeah, you know, with, with both Sarah and mm -hmm. Grease, you know? Absolutely. But, you know, like, despite that, you know, they kind of keep their heads, you know, pointed forward as to what they're doing. But then it, you can't help but it, it gives Cal this thing of, like... Are these the people that I should be rebuilding the yeah. Jedi Order with? Like, I gotta say that that section at uh, on that like asteroid planet or whatever it was, you know, mm -hmm. it was uh, that felt like the most tacked on section of the game. You know, like I yeah. felt like it was something that like the Colosseum aspect of it was written in before they had like decided how mm -hmm. they were going to write that into the story. And they yeah, like, I get that. It kind of like you end up just getting out of it and then not touching it anymore and then right. Grease is like my bad yeah basically yeah and yeah there's really no no consequence yeah for that i mean you know uh not to get too kind of ahead of ourselves but you know the game did well enough that there's kind of been some hints that there's going to be a sequel right you know so maybe that's something that could show up mm -hmm. but you know who knows at least as of, you know, beating Fallen Order, there's really no continuation to that. Right. But right now, it, it there's no definite sequel, like, planned. But yeah, yeah. Or announced, at least. It, uh, announced, for sure. But, you know, after you get all that kind of stuff kind of done, 
you know, you go back to Kashyyyk because the uh, the chief of the Wookiees, yeah, Tarful, Tarful, you know, he agrees to kind of have a meeting with you because he kind of possesses some of the information for another thing involving yeah, the Zeppo. Cordovo had befriended Tarful. Yeah, they were at buds. Some point. Yeah. So you meet up with him. And he basically says, you know, there is a kind of a great sacred tree mm-hmm. on Kashyyyk, and you are essentially tasked with climbing to the yeah. top of it. And um, so, and that's, uh, you know, another kind of fun, yeah, lengthier uh, mm-hmm. platforming portion. It's an enormous tree. It's, it's, yeah, it's Humongo. And there's a Humongo bird dragon yeah. creature. That that's thing hasn't been seen in years or something exactly like yeah it's extinct yeah, yeah. but you, you were able to make buds with it because <laughs> it gets uh injured mm-hmm. uh by the empire right and um you pull out the thorn in its side like yeah. a good mouse and a lion exactly yeah. yeah so you you make pals uh with that creature and as you're getting you're nearing the very top of the tree mm-hmm. uh you're ambushed by the uh ninth sister yes and uh, she, in your boss fight with her, you realize that, yeah, she is another um, Padawan that was basically kind of taken in mm-hmm. by the Empire after the Jedi Purge. And it's like, granted, um, outside of the Grand Inquisitor uh, and then the two that we encounter throughout Fallen Order, I don't know much about some of the others. But it it seems to be a pretty large thing that, like, most of the Inquisitors mm-hmm. within the Empire are all, like, Padawans or Jedi that are turned to the dark side mm-hmm. basically through torture? It's uh that happens uh, especially because it's so soon after the order 66 but like mm-hmm. uh I want to say rebels is a little farther along and there's a plot thread in that in which uh mm. you see like how they're trying to kidnap for sensitive children oh. to like, you know, raise them from youth into inquisitors and stuff like that. No but... one suspects the Imperial Inquisition. <laughs> no. Um, sorry, that's not a Star Wars reference. Uh, you're not allowed to make that. Damn it! Um, but yeah, you um, your fight with the Ninth Sister is like your first kind of boss fight that isn't essentially uh, interrupted. You know. Yeah, you your finish fights, the job. Exactly, yeah. Your fights with Trilla up until that point are basically all halted, like maybe half or a quarter of the way through, you mm-hmm. know, which sh- like is the game's job of kind of highlighting that, no, you're not ready right. to fight her yet. But yeah, you are able to fight and defeat the Ninth Sister. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then you are able to basically kind of... Finish the climb. Yeah, finish the climb. And you get the next piece that Cordova mm-hmm. has, you know, so that you can um, just continue your journey. And then, you know, yeah. your uh, bird dragon buddy lets you fly down. Yeah. It's funny. Didn't she, like, fly up to the top, uh, the ninth sister? Yes, on a... Sh- yeah. Why didn't Cal fly up? I That's guess a... they were trying to play, you know, co- uh, trying to stay undercover, I guess. Stay, yeah, stay undercover. And who knows, maybe it was, like, something to deal. Because, like, you, you can see as you're kind of climbing it, it is kind of a sacred thing that a lot of Wookiee mm, youths yeah, go through. That's right. So I think you're kind of, in a way, also trying to kind of... Respect the tree. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, respect that tree and the journey, which I think <laughs> mm-hmm. would have been a thing that Cordova probably would have wanted you to do. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's how he did it. But, mm-hmm. um... Once you get that, uh, you you have you go to Dathomir. This is the first yeah. time that the game explicitly tells you to go to Dathomir, yeah. and so this planet, you know, home of the Darth Maul race. Exactly, yeah. And so Darth Maul's from there. So is Asajj Ventress. Yeah. Um, the Night Sisters and Night Brothers. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so in this place, it is a barren wasteland it is mm-hmm. well you know it, it's a craggy desert planet yes know? it's also a bunch of bug monsters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's Swamps. yeah mm-hmm. this like kind of like you were saying with the coliseum dathomir was probably my least favorite yeah portion of the game because you know i mean it's a little bit more difficult than other planets. Yeah. And it's towards the end of the game at this it point, is, you're yeah. starting to get and a little it's more like, challenging. Yeah. The, and, like, everything on this planet is hostile to you. Yeah. You know? And whereas other planets, you know, mm-hmm. they're 
not necessarily easy to traverse, but they are mapped out and structured in such a way that feels kind of natural. Whereas Dathomir is very condensed and layered, mm. so it is exceedingly easy to get lost on Dathomir. Okay. So you've got these kind of various things that, you know, make mm -hmm. the whole trek through it a lot more difficult. I thought Zepho was the most labyrinthine, you know? That, it's, yeah, that's fair. It's freaking slides and ladders. Slides that's true. and elevators. Like, where am I going? You know, but... I'm um, glad you brought up the slides. Because <laughs> there's... There's a lot more of them than I thought there'd be <laughs> in the game. And as we got towards the end of the game, mm -hmm. it kept think like I kept thinking about uh, Super Mario 64 <laughs> and when you'd have those slides. And so every time Cal would go down one of those slides, I had that song. <laughs> yeah. So I would ha like I would essentially like as I'd be sliding down, I'd be going. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit hard to whistle in my face mask, but you know, uh, the attempt yeah. was there. Um, but um, but yeah, you're definitely right. Zepho is very labyrinthine, mm -hmm. but I feel like just because of the ways Dathomir is kind of stacked up, and also just the hostility of yeah. everything, it made it a little bit harder. The archer character or enemy was pretty annoying. In Absolutely, that game, in that Dathomir section, you know. Yeah, um, it's. We haven't talked too much about the combat, but like oh, uh, point. the the storm troopers, uh, and like the Darth Maul, the Knight Brothers, mm -hmm. you know, they're all just Darth Mauls. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, wow. Uh, no, like uh, they all manage to find a melee weapon that doesn't like that fights your lightsaber, basically. Yeah. Uh, whether it's like a a staff with lightning at the end or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that's what the storm troopers use. And I really enjoyed, like, the Dark Troopers or oh, whatever. Oh, the Purge those... Troopers. Yeah, those yeah. guys are fun to fight. Yeah, they're, like, they are heavily trained Stormtroopers, trained mm -hmm. with basically the um, the idea of fighting Jedi. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm And whether they're, like, you had some that were, like, heavy melee or mm -hmm. light melee, and then there was, like, a shooty one. Yeah, there's a ranged that. one. Yeah, there's a there's enough of a refreshing variety mm -hmm. out of them. Yeah, they're, they're a fun enemy to fight. Yeah. And they show up with just the right amount of frequency, mm -hmm. you know. So each time you encounter them, the stakes just raise, yeah, a little bit. It's cool, like, you know, the, I would say that the the normal mobs were usually not very difficult in the no. game. Uh, it's like uh, you would fight. Uh, they would throw in like easy stormtroopers to be mm -hmm. like this is how cool you are yeah you know what i mean you get to feel uh, like a jedi exactly and so like when you're deflecting lightsaber or like yeah. deflecting laser bolts you're like i'm fucking awesome exactly <laughs> i admit that i saved a couple of clips of him just of cow like reflecting bolts and then oh yeah it's super killing cool killing jet air stormtroopers and not jedi what's funny is like so many times the stormtroopers you know are very vocal about how fucked they are. They're just like, it's just me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Right. No, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, mm -hmm. So you're on Dathomir. Yep. You're, uh, if, if you haven't found it the first time now, you got your, your double lightsaber. Exactly, yeah. And so pretty much most of the things that are, um, like, like you were saying, with the Knight Brothers, all of them are essentially kind of... Um, not necessarily possessed, mm -hmm. but, like, they're kind of, they're attacking you kind of at the behest of the Night Sister who is on the planet. I've got her. her name is Marin. Marin, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she, like, she ends up managing to control the corpses of a lot of enemies. Yeah. So you're being attacked by Zombies. the zombie Night Brothers, basically. Yep, yep. And, uh. And Night Sisters too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so and... it's like you know, the basically two of like the only living people on this planet, at least in the mm -hmm. portion that you are. There's the uh, the dude in the black robe, mm -hmm. and Marin, mm -hmm. and like everything else is either like dead, hostile to you, or both. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like as you're as you're exploring there, you know, you are essentially. Let's see. You're going a little bit closer. You're exploring. And uh, you finally, you finally find the temple. 
mm-hmm. that is on Dathomir. But um, kind of similar to like the uh, the cave uh, in Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Like encountering it, you kind of have this force vision mm-hmm. of, you know, fighting uh, Topa. Yeah, you know? your, your old master. Exactly. It's Essentially, it's just, you know, the force like making Cal confront... Yeah. The thing that is still like holding him back. Absolutely. Uh so he's um attacked by this vision of mm-hmm. Jaro who is like re- belittling him for not being good enough, you know, yeah. and like you're the uh, reason I'm dead. Yeah. Uh which is, you know, that sense that guilt that Cal has been carrying mm-hmm. and so in the process it destroys your lightsaber, mm-hmm. you know. So you're left to leave Dathomir. Yep. And you go to, is it Ilum or Ilium? Ilum, Ilum. I think. Uh, yeah. Where the kyber crystals that are made, that mm-hmm. uh, that you find to make lightsabers, that's where you find those. That's where they're made, yeah. And uh, so you head off to uh, Ilum. Mm-hmm. And you well, have, as yeah. you're trying to escape, because you're trying to escape Dathomir and you have no means to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. And Marin, you know, wants to take this opportunity to be like, no, yeah. Either, like, get off this planet or die. Mm-hmm. And the dude in the black robe basically reveals that, you know, yes, he's a, also a former Jedi, you know, mm-hmm. from the Purge. And he ch- essentially is saying, like, here, I'll hold her off, mm-hmm. you know, go. Yeah. And so, you know, he's setting himself up to be, like, you know, basically he's, an he's ally. To, yeah, he wants to be your bud. Exactly, yeah. And so, the, but then, yeah, so you have to go. Your journey is ground to a dead halt so that mm-hmm. you can go to Islam. And make your own lightsaber. Mm -hmm. What's cool about that is, you know, making your own lightsaber is like, that's the thing that every Jedi Padawan has to do. Yeah. You know, it's their, it's kind of like their rite of passage Mm -hmm. so that they can become a Jedi. And Cal never had the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Despite all of the upgrading and tinkering that he's done with his lightsaber Mm -hmm. leading up to it, it's still, it's still his starter saber. I think it's implied that he did he not or, ever do that, but and like because it's usually at a younger age that uh-huh. uh, that you go through it. But um, oh he, no, you're right because he's using Jaro's that's broken lightsaber. Yeah, saber. he's using Jaro's. Yeah, that's it. My bad. Yeah. And so, so now it's time to you know fully make your make your own. own. Yeah, yeah. So you go into the uh, into the temp or not temple, but into the caves where the crystals mm-hmm. are found. And you are able to make your own saber, yeah. which includes picking the color yeah. of lightsaber. And you have, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm so excited to mm-hmm. talk about this with you. Yes, so absolutely. when you like again, so each lightsaber color mm-hmm. has kind of a a deeper meaning, essentially, yeah. to what your role or your kind of preferred philosophy within the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Uh, what that is yeah and so um what color did you choose for cal's saber i chose yellow because i also looked up the Mm -hmm. the causes or meanings behind the different colors yeah yeah. when you start the game it gives you blue or green to choose from between Mm -hmm. uh for jaro's lightsaber Mm -hmm. and uh yet they also like if you had like the pre-order bonus or if you bought it yeah. online, they could use orange as well, which mm-hmm. is just odd. Um, but I chose yellow because it is like a they're generally assigned yellow lightsabers, the guardians of the Jedi temples. Yeah. And, uh, so and I was like, he's sort of like protecting the Jedi Order in the sense that he's mm-hmm. trying to like you know find and restart it. So yeah, and his I, like, journey is like lo- there's a lot of academics. You know, so it's like yeah. it's also protecting like just like the the Jedi's like way of life and thinking. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. It's uh, like I think that you know, blue would probably be an uh, the most appropriate color for the character, but I just mm-hmm. like the idea of changing it as well to yellow. You know, blue is yeah definitely like it's most Padawans have a blue saber, mm-hmm. and like blue, the meaning of that. Is like yeah, they're the guardians of the Jedi Order, and so they're the Jedi Knights. The really. Jedi Knights, yeah. yeah. And oftentimes, 
people with the blue lightsaber are oftentimes considered the order's best duelists mm, yeah you know they're like they're more focused on they're like the little soldiers of in a way the the order whereas a green lightsaber user is more of like a force user you know exactly yeah so when i when it came time for me to kind of put my saber together you know mm -hmm. i i again i looked up the the stuff about it and mm -hmm. I opted to give Cal a green one. Okay. Because, you know, uh, in the prequel trilogy, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn used a green lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And Qui-Gon, he was, like, all about, you know, like, the living force. And yeah. kind of his journey and ev all of his actions were based on, you know, what was the will of the force. Yeah. And to me, that felt very similar to what Cal is going through. Yeah. And, like, the message that Jaro Tapal had been giving him is, like, you know, trust in the Force. Mm -hmm. That is what is going to get you to your journey's completion. Yeah. And so for Cal to, like, finally really grasp that mm -hmm. that message and teaching, it made sense to give him a green lightsaber to yeah. kind of reflect that. So, in first off... This is the nerdiest thing we've ever discussed. It's Absolutely, basically choosing Cal's lightsaber color Absolutely. and what yeah. the the origin of the lightsabers' colors mean. You know, um, should we go on to discuss further lightsaber colors to Absolutely. the dear li listeners well, so who don't have to look it up? I, I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to make your own, oh, as a person, my as self. a person, mm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, um. I've wanted to make a lightsaber for a really long fucking time, <laughs> um, so... Sure, like a... Oh, like, as a toy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, not, well, a model of... A model, uh, yeah. Excuse me. But one that could be dueling ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, and here, I, okay, so when you asked me that, I'm like, oh, if I were an actual Jedi, what would I use? That was what I thought, but if, if, uh, if I were to make one just as a person, mm -hmm. I might make it similar to cowls and make it yellow because i i, I don't know i mm -hmm. like yellow mm -hmm. but uh you know uh if i were in the jedi order i mm -hmm. think i would you know hope i got a green lightsaber mm -hmm. i would want to be connected to the force you know yeah absolutely uh, you, you want to be a pacifist mm -hmm. over like a little soldier boy mm -hmm. little peacekeeper you know yeah um Jason, are you going to get yourself a purple lightsaber? You're goddamn right I'm getting myself a purple <laughs> lightsaber. Like, right. So the meaning behind the purple lightsaber, you know, mm -hmm. is like there's only a couple of people within Star Wars that have had them. Yeah. You've got Mace Windu mm -hmm. and Mara Jade. Okay. Like, those are really the only two that I'm aware of. And Mara is in Legends. Yeah, now, right? exactly. So in the Legends canon, Mara Jade marries Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And originally she was... A Jedi that and was like kind of not necessarily an Inquisitor, but somewhere mm -hmm. along that line, like she was one of the Empire's or the Emperor's agents, okay. and she was tasked with killing um, Luke Luke Skywalker after yeah. the um, the Emperor died. Mm -hmm. But you know she's not able to do it, mm -hmm. and throughout the adventure that the two of them have together, because they're kind of like brought together by circumstances and whatnot, mm -hmm. and eventually you know they you know. They, they fall in love with each other. Love. Yeah. And, um... I've always wanted to date people who wanted to kill me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... The romance is really... There's nothing quite like it. The but, So, yeah, the purple lightsaber kind of signifies that they have a bit of dark side in exactly. them. Exactly, yeah. Or at least in their fighting style. Exactly, yeah. Like, fighting style and also philosophy. So, like, Mace Windu was considered, you know, probably the most... Powerful. Adept and powerful duelist, duelist within... Uh, yeah. the Jedi Council. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, obviously you've got like the whole thing with, you know, if you put blue and red together, you get purple. Right. And so like the purple lightsaber kind of symbolizes that, that blend mm -hmm. of kind of the light and dark side. Did you know the story of Darth Plagueis uh, the Wise? <laughs> <laughs> it's not one that any nerd would tell you. No. Um, <laughs> God, do you know the story of, uh, of why Mace Windu had a purple lightsaber. I do, and I yeah. love it so yeah. much. It's Samuel L. Jackson, the actor for Mace Windu. He said he's like he's watching the scenes with the the like huge Jedi versus like mm -hmm. Genosans and whatnot and battle droids, and 
He's like, I can't see my guy. Mm-hmm. I can't see myself. Where's and he asked Lucas, he's like, can I have a different colored lightsaber so that I can see myself in the fights and that other people will see him, of course. And uh, Lucas eventually relented. Yeah. And it's just like, I love it so much. <laughs> like when Samuel L. Jackson asks you if he can have a purple yeah. lightsaber, you give it to him. It doesn't matter who you are. And doesn't he have like BAMF on his lightsaber hilt or something? Like he that? might. Yeah. That's Yeah, it's just... Um, just just Samuel L. Jackson things. Yeah. I mean, how sick would it be to act in a Star Wars movie? Oh my god. Right? Yeah. (sighs) Mm -hmm. If (laughs) only. Yeah, I couldn't... uh, But, like, white lightsabers, they're kind of, like, the only person I can think of that uses those were Ahsoka. And sort of symbolized her, like, uh, detachment from Mm -hmm. the Jedi Council. So it's sort of like gray Jedis use the white lightsabers. Yeah, her white ones that she gets and uses throughout Rebels are actually ones like... Like, she purified some Sith Mm, ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, And, uh, let's see. She... There was no... There's, like, no... Or there is some orange user, isn't there? There... Yes. What does yodel do? <laughs> Yaddle. I have no idea. <laughs> that's uh, see, yellow. That's the female Yoda. Yeah, yeah. She, uh... I, with the ones that I wrote down, I wrote down blue, green, red, purple, and yellow, and white. Okay. And uh, the uh, the red, of course, are Sith, and they're yeah. usually like... Uh, in Legends, mm-hmm. they were... Uh, like synthetic kyber yeah. crystals. I think they still are, even in it, like the new continuity. I think. I, I'm I'm nerding right now. Yeah, no, adjusting uh, from your what glasses. I've read in uh, the new canon, they are crystals that have been infused with an evil energy. Mm. So you know. So basically, corrupting a kyber corrupting, crystal. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Both are cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, which explains too why uh, when you go through Ilum. Mm-hmm. After you get your lightsaber, you see like there's no sign of it from the front of the the caves that you mm-hmm. entered. But like once you're inside and you get past the lightsaber portion, you're like, oh, there's an enormous mining operation happening here as well. Yes, and so it makes sense that they're looking for kyber crystals as opposed to like making their own. You know, right? Yeah, that definitely does make a lot of sense. Yeah, you're hard pressed to find a place where there isn't an imperial mining operation. <laughs> they're just like they are setting up shop. Everywhere. Absolutely. On Zepho, they're looking for artifacts. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for kyber crystals. On exactly. Them. But, uh, <laughs> so now you can go back to Dathomir yeah. with your freshly made yellow lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, or, you know, whatever color you choose. And mm-hmm. you, uh, you go back to the temple where mm-hmm. you meet up with Terran Malikos again. The, mm-hmm. uh, the cloaked figure. Yeah. Who, uh. He ends up revealing that he's, like, using the evil powers of uh, Dathomir, Dathomir's yeah. energy to try and, like, infuse himself with a greater power. Mm-hmm. And he wants to be basically be the big boss of Dathomir. And... Yeah, he does. And, like, as you're on your way to fight him, you kind of you have to do that thing with Jaro Tapal again. Yeah. And so, in doing that, you get to, like, you know, you, you reach that conclusion or just like that, you know how fully accepting what happened and in doing Mm -hmm. that you actually get to do a a brief gameplay portion where you're playing as kid cal yeah yeah and so you know you're on your way to kind of go meet up with your master for some training you get Mm -hmm. you're like walking through a ship like exchanging high fives with clone troopers (laughs) like you're all pals yeah Yeah. and then yeah and then you know as you're talking with uh jaro you know, one of the clone troopers turns around and he's getting that message from the Emperor of mm-hmm. Execute Order 66. Yeah. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like, he's about to turn around and then Topal, mm-hmm. like, feels the disturbance right. in the force and just, like, boom. Yeah. Cuts him down. We've been betrayed. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. And so then it's the portion continues where, you know, you're trying to escape. Mm-hmm. Cal loses his lightsaber. And, um,. Then is uh, reunites with Jaro Tapal, and Tapal like essentially dies protecting Cal. Yeah. As the escape, and you know, gives him his lightsaber and going, mm-hmm. trust only in the Force. Mm-hmm. And then boom, you've kind of reached that conclusion. 
you understand like where Why, Cal was yeah. at the mm-hmm. beginning of the game and kind of mm-hmm. everything that set up the kind of the journey that he would go on. Yeah. And after that, you know, you're you go deeper into that temple and so right before you you meet up with Taryn, mm-hmm. you meet up with Marin. <laughs> and that and she was the night sister that, you know, gave you such a uh, a warm welcome. Yeah. On your way there. And she reveals, I can't remember if it's then or the, later, but she talks about why she has such a hatred for the Jedi. Yes. And, uh, she's like a lightsaber wielder killed all the Night Sisters and mm-hmm. stuff. Which, if you uh, if you watch Clone Wars, you know, mm-hmm. you find out who that lightsaber wielder is. Yeah, it's General Grievous. And that's right. Yeah. He, uh, he's, of course, you know... He's no Jedi, but uh, right. it's enough of a confusing matter to... Uh... Exactly. Yeah, no one bothered to explain to Marin what lightsaber colors mean. <laughs> you know, if they did, this would never would have happened. Grievous but, I mean, always used blue and green. Exactly. Know? That's true, yeah. So Grievous, you know, kind of is definitely... So he's cheating because he uses stolen lightsabers. Exactly, you know? yeah. And there, are tro- there are trophies in his collection. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Cal is able to kind of talk to her, you know, yeah. he, since he kind of has this newfound kind of uh, like he kind of. Peace. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's yeah. essentially kind of he's figured out, you know, what's been giving him so much trouble. Mm-hmm. He's at peace with it. And so only after that is he able to kind of talk to Marin and kind yeah. of say like, hey, you know, this, you know, I'm sorry what happened here, but it wasn't the Jedi that did it, right. you know. And so. Marion essentially realizes that Malakos has, you know, yeah, he's been feeding her, her a, yeah, yeah, feeding her a crock of shit. Mm-hmm. And so you go to meet with Malakos, and um, yeah, that's when you do realize, yeah, he's got these two red lightsabers. He's uh, yeah. also not the not the guy that you know he was kind of uh, revealing himself to be. Yeah, I mean, and you've got a, a boss fight. He's a meanie. He is a meanie. So. That one took a few tries as well. Yeah, um, that's a toughie. He's flinging rocks. I remember those for some reason. That was a tough thing to deal with. Um, yeah. Eventually, Marin helps you in the fight at the end. She's super slamming cool. him with rocks or whatever mm-hmm. as well. And um, so you defeat Taryn, mm-hmm. and you uh, you basically convince Marin to. Yeah, join she joins the Mantis's you. crew. Yeah, which yeah. freaks the hell out of Grease at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That basically, yeah, by going into that final part of the temple, you get that last key, mm-hmm. you know, to get stuff. Marin comes with you, and Grease right. is, you know, upset <laughs> at I, first, but basically he's just scared because, like, yeah. he's you know one of those people who has just only heard bad things right. about Dathomir. And you know, it's kind of cool because uh, you realize that. They're both like orphans of a broken mm-hmm. order, you know. Yeah, and uh, that is Marin and Cal, and I ship them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you get uh, this. They have that camaraderie. They there. really do. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah, they their dynamic just is instantly great. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like she's that she's that last ingredient. Yeah, you know, and with that, like the the crew of the Mantis is complete it really is yeah uh so then is you go back to uh bogano yep you go back to bogano you know with the idea it's like all right yeah now let's uh let's get this holocron and let's Mm -hmm. you know but like as soon as you get there you get the holocron and you get another vision Mm -hmm. and it's basically you know you get this thing of like cal um starting this new jedi order only for the empire to find it Mm-hmm. And it basically results in all of these kids being taken yeah. in by the Empire and Cal becoming an Inquisitor. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, like, like no sooner does that vision uh, basically kind of reveal itself that Trilla shows up, you know, mm-hmm. kind of she's anticipating that, you know, you'd get there. So she just right. decides to wait and take it from you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, your fight with her, like... You yes, you win the fight with her. And like you use the force, you reach and grab her lightsaber. But mm-hmm. just like and we hadn't even brought this up earlier, but like, you know, throughout the game, Cal is able to kind of sense force echoes. Like the collectibles mm-hmm. and whatnot mm-hmm. that you find throughout the game are usually 
connected to something that happened on this planet mm -hmm. before you got there. Yeah. You know, and throughout those force echoes is also oftentimes how Cal is able to kind of get back uh, his memories mm -hmm. and his abilities. And so pretty much throughout the entire game, encountering force echoes is a good thing. <laughs> but when he pulls Trilla's lightsaber away from her and grabs it, mm -hmm. like the force echo and the negative energy that is connected to that is so strong, mm -hmm. it basically like knocks him out. Yeah. Like he just, there's just that much pain and anger in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so she, Trilla takes the opportunity and snags the holocron. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks to suck, Cal. Yeah, basically, yeah. But um, so, you know, which brings us into the, like the final portion of the game where you're like, okay, well now we need to get that holocron because now we've essentially put a target on all of these force sensitive children. Yeah. And Sarah has a pretty damned good idea where mm -hmm. the holocron is. And that's on the planet where the inquisition like yep. has its home base, which is a pretty cool area. It's underwater. Yeah. It's this underwater base on this planet, of, you know, mm -hmm. um, so at this point, you, uh, uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. decides to join you in your yeah adventure in the sense that she will uh, she'll use your or uh, she uses Trilla's lightsaber. Oh, Trilla's okay. Yeah, she uses Trilla's lightsaber. Uh, okay, um, and so you get to go ahead and invade this new mm -hmm. uh, uh, final area. Really, this, yeah. Uh, in imperial inquisition sort of base mm -hmm. so uh it's kind of you know at this point you got all your powers you're yep. you're just mowing through uh stormtroopers there's a couple of tough sections but you uh you make your way to a final fight with uh trilla, with trilla. man and that was that like you said earlier you know the first fight with and the last Bogdor. fight are the toughest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. And yeah, no, it took me... I was playing the game on... Basically, it's normal yeah. uh, difficulty. It took me about, I'd say, 10 plus tries mm -hmm. uh, to beat Trilla. Mm -hmm. But it's like... There was like one time where I was getting a little frustrated. And I... Just for the like a little moment, I considered like maybe lowering the difficulty. But mm. I was like, I'm so close. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I can do it. Yeah. And the, for me, the difficulty of the game, every time I lost, I was able to kind of see and understand right. why I lost. So, like, the combat was always, in my opinion, firm but fair, mm -hmm. you know? So, when I did finally beat Trilla, yeah. like, I was just like... Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it took me a long time. To, uh, on my first playthrough, I was playing on the hard mode, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, she, you know, she has some moves that, like, will one-shot you. In, if you're not careful, yeah. yeah. Um, but by the time I played through it a second time, I it was a lot smoother. Sure. Um, you know, just being able to, I, I don't know. Uh, I really speed run, or kind of speed run the game, ran the game mm -hmm. the second time through. I just was enjoying the combat a lot and really wanted to try the harder challenge yeah and, yeah uh, it was um it was a lot of fun but yeah mm -hmm. that final fight uh very difficult very difficult and like after you do that you know you like you get this opportunity where you you know you've this time you know you have well and fully defeated trilla mm -hmm. you know and it's like so you get that personal satisfaction because like we were saying each time you fight her previously throughout the game the game stops you at a certain point yeah you know but this is the first time you are able to get her health bar down to zero mm -hmm. and say yes i did it this time yeah and so you are you know you are there you're and you're finally starting to try and talk to trilla like mm -hmm. you know you're basically essentially getting trying to get through to her you know yeah. and sarah shows up to mm -hmm. also do that and just like just as like, the two of you are getting through to Trilla, you know, reaching, like, a good conclusion and thinking, like, yeah, we can move past this. Mm -hmm. Who shows up but Darth fucking Vader? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, like, the scene where he kind of comes into frame. Yeah, you hear him breathing. You first. hear his breathing and yeah. you see, like, there's that smoke that's behind mm -hmm. her. 
and like you see Trilla's eyes oh, just yeah. go wide and she just realizes I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. And right before she is cut down by Vader, mm-hmm. she just goes, avenge us. And then <laughs> boom, Vader kills her. Yeah. And like what's so like interesting and cool is Cal and Sarah have no idea who Vader is. Right. And but they just are able to see like this guy's this got guy some power is to him. Really yeah. fucking scary. Right. And it's like and Sarah so, just like she tries to like leap attack yeah, at yeah. him and he just force pushes her aside like it's nothing, like you know. Nothing. It and looks like she dies actually. It does, because, yeah. Uh, Falls into a pit, yeah. which basically kills no Star Wars character <laughs> ever. But it's like a lava pit of some kind. Yeah, you know? it so looks like it, it looks yeah. bad. But yeah, no mm-hmm. one who falls in a pit in Star Wars is dead, pretty no, much. No. Um, but Pits yeah, it's just a new beginning for most characters. Pretty much, um, yeah. And so, what's cool is like you know, we were kind of talking about this before I even started mm-hmm. the game, but like this is kind of a thing that you encounter. In in some like fandoms, but it seems really present in Star Wars. Like if you don't watch or play the thing Immediate, right away, yeah. it's going to be spoiled for you. Yeah, you know. So, like I like I was saying at the very beginning of the episode, I didn't play Fallen Order right away. Right. So, I had the bit with Vader ruined for me. Mm-hmm. You know. So I I knew Vader was in the game. Mm-hmm. I kind of like. Uh, just I had seen like things on YouTube or stuff talking about it. And so th- I was under kind of the false, false belief that you actually fight Vader. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really, really pleased that you don't. Yeah. Um, in fact, Jason, you know, told me that, uh, they had the final fight spoiled for them before they had finished the game. And I'm like, I didn't, I had the chance of course, to be like, actually it's not a final battle, but right. Uh, you know, it just let you think it. Right? Exactly. Because yeah. It's uh it's cooler how it plays out, which Absolutely. is just Cal is utterly powerless against the yeah. might of Vader. You you're, yeah. You're just running from him. And it's mm-hmm. like, to me, I kind of like, it was, for me, it was like the equivalent of, you know, like Vader felt like going up against the Terminator or Michael Myers in <laughs> yeah. which it's just like, this is just an unstoppable juggernaut behind yeah. you and you just have to get out and survive. Right. And so it kind of reminded me of that scene at the end of Rogue One. Absolutely. Where, there, where it's that ship that is mm-hmm. bringing the Death Star plans and you just see Vader's lightsaber go up mm-hmm. and he's just cutting down all these people. It's like, so like one of the things that, I don't know, new Star Wars stuff has done in a really great way is it has it has found ways to basically turn Darth Vader into a horror movie villain. Yeah. And they do it so damned well. Mm-hmm. Like it, they just they make Darth Vader so scary. Yeah. And it's very cool like uh you know even just the fact like if you he must have seemed that powerful and scary and um if you had never seen episode 6 too if mm. you think like in you know he he in episode four, he's just like he's. You don't fight him at all. Or the heroes don't. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, Obi Wan dies to him, but mm-hmm. it's like uh, it's more like he's crushes Ben Kenobi, and then uh, he's like a freaking door stops him from yeah, <laughs> like uh, chasing down the the heroes, but. It's like, and then he wins against the fight in the fight against Luke. He basically doesn't kill him because he wants to convert him to the dark side, of course. So, like, he just seems like an unstoppable force in the movies. And mm-hmm. it seemed like they were trying to bring that back, that yeah. sense back in Rebels and, or Rogue One and yeah. uh, Rogue One, uh, Rebels, Fallen Order. Fallen Order. Yeah. But yeah, and it's just to, to make the final gameplay portion a chase yeah. is pretty cool. Like it's almost kind of a really fun bookend to your real first gameplay portion. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Which I never really thought about until later. now. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, you're, you're escaping or you're attempting to, mm-hmm. and you know, Vader shows up mm-hmm. and BD one, like essentially tries hacking him. So like <laughs> yeah. he zaps him and like, you know, fucks with Vader's suit because mm-hmm. he is more machine than man. <laughs> and, um, and there was a brief moment where I was like, they're going to kill BD-1. I was just like, <laughs> and, but no, Sarah, 
Like we said, mm-hmm. no one who falls in a pit in Star Wars is dead. Yeah. Sarah shows up and like she distracts Vader. From... Yeah, like she comes this close from succumbing to the dark side again. Like mm-hmm. she's doing the same shit that like basically mm-hmm. got her out of this prison. Right. And Vader even says, like, man, so much hatred. You would have made a great Inquisitor. <laughs> and but Cal is able to like to stop her from doing it. You know, he creates mm-hmm. this break in the uh the tunnel so yeah. like it's flooding with water mm-hmm. and you're able to get Sarah out of there and vader is just you know holding he, back yeah, the he's water forced to just yeah block the the water from and it appears as if uh cal and sarah are gonna drown mm-hmm. but uh naturally they're saved by marin yep um, and so marin shows up and saves you and then you yeah you guys wake up on the ship um afterwards you've escaped you've got the holocron Everything mm-hmm. seems okay. And what's just fascinating is, you know, at the end of all of this, mm-hmm. Cal decides to destroy the holocron. Yeah. Which, like, makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, because, I mean, it came this close, you yeah. know, for the Empire finding it. Right. So, like, like Cal kind of has this thing of, you know, trusting in the Force, like mm-hmm. Jaro, you know, taught him. And so mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if these kids are going to be able to, you know do this like the force will figure it out Mm -hmm. but like where things are right now it was just not the time to try and rebuild the jedi order yeah and so like then after they destroy that holocron it kind of ends on this thing of just like where to now Mm -hmm. you know it it opens itself up yeah you know to being a uh Uh, the first in a series of yeah kind yeah and like we were kind of mentioning earlier um, the game was a hit mm-hmm. and um, either EA or Respawn had basically kind of used the term that it is a franchise starter. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's every possibility that there's going to be a Fallen Order 2, which yeah. if there is, I'm not going to wait to play this one. <laughs> I will play it probably right away. Yeah, um, smart move. Yeah, especially if there's going to be people saying like, oh, yeah, you fight this person in it. Right. You fight evil Yoda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. I don't know. But, um, you know, we've kind of ra- gone through the game and it's like, I don't know. My my time and experience with Fallen Order was just fantastic. I Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. Absolutely a, loved it. It's a great game. Yeah, just super fun game. Like, mm-hmm. despite my frustrations that I had on Dathomir, like, yeah, yeah. If I didn't have some other games that I was ready to play, I probably would have also done a second playthrough mm-hmm. or like maybe tried to, you know, 100% the playthrough that I was on. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't talk too much about the collectibles, but they are, it's like, it's all cosmetic stuff. Yeah, uh, right. That was something I enjoyed is that you, uh, you're not in bound to explore, or right. over explore or just like really feel like you're missing something if yeah. you uh, miss some crate here or there, yeah. you know. All of your exploration, it's basically just, you know. Yeah, it's for funsies. Exactly, yeah, for funsies. Whether or not you want to find cool stuff for your saber or, mm-hmm. you know, how Cal, BD1, or the Mantis looks. It's all, yeah, yeah like you said, it's all cosmetic. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, the game, any progression that the game gives you is, like, from experience is, is that the you, story. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and the um, like we mentioned, you know, the, one of the elements that borrows from Dark Souls is, mm-hmm. you know, throughout all the levels, there's like these points, points. Yeah, yeah, which sometimes they are located in really funny places. You know, Cal always says like, you know, yeah, every once in a while, I just need to find a good place to meditate. <laughs> and like, especially like the fight, the final fight before Trilla, you're in like this place that is just next door to a torture chamber. This is a good place to meditate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's there's some good energy here. I'm g- I can take a five. <laughs> yeah. There's. I'm glad there's no danger of him being interrupted in his meditation. Yeah, exactly. Like, what if Trilla just opened, like, creaked open the door and like, oh, is he just taking a power nap over there? <laughs> but yeah, no. So you're and like when you're meditating, you know, that's where you're able to kind of uh, heal and also invest points into that skill tree. Yeah. And, like, the skill tree kind of opens up to you more as you get more uh, force powers. And, mm-hmm. you know, it is a, it's a simple skill tree. 
but it's the perfect size in it, my opinion. It, yeah, exactly. No, I completely agree. Like, you know, there's not a lot of there's not like unnecessary things where it's just like this skill tree mm-hmm. is just like you get 150 more yeah. of this. You know, there granted there are points where you could get like more force. Mm-hmm. Um your lightsaber will do a little more damage, but it's like mm-hmm. those are really few and far between. Most of them are connected to, you know, moves that you can do yeah, like cool in combat. Abilities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, some of the YouTubers that I follow, you know, I've done videos about like skill trees and like, mm-hmm. like kind of the consensus is that the best way to kind of do them is to kind of have it so that the gameplay will open up to you more the more you play it, you right. know? So you're not like overwhelmed by options, mm-hmm. but so like if you're, if you unlock them, then you're adding this new move into your repertoire, yeah. like as you go. I just started Assassin's Creed Valhalla last week or so. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it has, like, it even says in the game, the skill tree may be intimidating at first, but don't worry, you can respec it at any time. So, you know, it's got that going for it, but God, like, the first, for example, the first thing that you can unlock is plus two to melee damage, you know, and then, like, plus 1.7 to stealth damage, and I'm like, oh my God. Yes. There's hundreds of little circles. Little nodes everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, Chase was telling me about it, like, telling me about the skill tree, and it's like, that's nice because it can allow for a decent level of customization. Yeah. But there's a point. It's just too minuscule of a change, and they even give you two levels each time you play it, like, each time you level up, just, like... It knows that it would be too slow otherwise. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, that's a different game entirely. But right. just in contrast, you know, I think that Fallen Order does a good job of the skill tree. Yeah, it's a yeah, just a great, great skill tree. And it's just like we were saying at the very beginning, you know, this game balances its varying pieces just so well. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's probably one of the most just kind of like balanced and focused games that I've yeah. played in a long time, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like the pacing of it story-wise is really good. And outside of that Coliseum bit, mm-hmm. um, it's, for the most part, all killer and no filler. Yeah. And for someone who's been playing a lot of JRPGs, <laughs> that's a nice change of pace. <laughs> Did you encounter any bugs while you were playing? Um... There was a couple of, yeah, there was, like, some times where, like, I'd show up in an area and people would be, like, T-posing. Yeah. Like, yeah. that that would happen. Um, I had a guy where I was fighting and he started, like, it, it happened a couple of times where they began to fall in place for, like, permanently. Oh. As if they were, like, you know, uh, never going to, they were in some sort of half-death. You know? Yes. I think <laughs> I a, may have encountered that once. Thankfully, yeah. you know, one of the benefits of me taking a while to play this game is by the time I played it, mm-hmm. a lot of it was patched. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, really, the only things that I kind of encountered is there was some kind of long loading and startup times. Yeah. Um, which the game did get a uh, PS5, mm-hmm. not like a full re-release like some games get, yeah. but you know, a little more optimized. Mm-hmm. So maybe when Techie and I uh, get a PS5. Maybe I'd play through Fallen Order again. Yeah, no. Uh, those loading times were a little rough sometimes when mm-hmm. you died consistently. That's you know, the thing. That's yeah, like... like if you are in a thing where you die a lot, mm-hmm. a long loading time, that is, that's one way to really just sap your energy yeah. out of wanting to play. Um, yeah, if you compare like dying in Bloodborne or Demon Souls for PS5, like, uh, you know, it's night and day just yeah. how long it takes to load. And then... Like they don't even show you the the lore anymore in Demon Souls. They just show like smoke for a few seconds, and then mm-hmm. you're back to the campfire. Whatever. Right? Yeah, you'd barely be even able to have time to read the lore. Right. It's just like according to pro. Oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I'm. Yeah, I'm glad that they're getting a some kind of you know uh, PS5 update. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if I'll ever play it again. I've you played like it twice. I've, yeah. yeah, I it's. I feel like I, you know, I'm done with the game. Maybe I'll get nostalgic a few years from now yeah. or something. But granted, like, I could definitely see myself going back to the game to maybe like hundred percent it. You know, mm-hmm. to kind of 
fully explore um because the game does a really good job like its map system is very good and mm -hmm. it's good at telling you you know this area has still this much stuff that is left for you right. to find mm -hmm. so if you are the person who kind of wants to you know complete the map get all the goodies you have a very good resource built into the game to help you do mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. so maybe i could do that you know yeah um i enjoyed like finding force echoes throughout the, the game and learning lore for the star wars universe that way yeah. too you know that was pretty cool especially mm -hmm. the section with the the crashed uh Clone War era starship. Yeah. Um, and you, like, just, it was pre Order 66 or something like mm -hmm. that, you know, and these echoes, and they were, I mean, most of the echoes were, I suppose, but, um, it, I don't know. I that suppose. Was one of my favorite sections in the game is crawling through that. Like, yeah. That, uh, I can't, I, they're like, there's a name for them. They're like vanguards or something like sure. that. Sure. That, you know, that kind of reminds I didn't really even think about it until just now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the Force Echoes and the way that the game gives you its extra lore is also a Dark souls -y, sure. you know, sort of thing. You know, Dark Souls, like, most of the story, you know, is kind of through kind of piecing together mm -hmm. a lot of lore stuff. You know, so there was definitely a few times where in, when I was playing Fallen Order that I did, like, take a break from what I was doing and, like, mm -hmm. explore. Because that's how I found out that it was Grievous that was oh, on the planet sure. yeah, yeah. Um, so i mean that was that was cool it was a really great way because you know as we've kind of pointed out before star wars is one of those media franchises where there are always threads that you can pull on yeah. and find a new thing to kind of look into right there's so much media out there for this franchise yeah it's a. Uh... Especially if you count legends, you know. Oh sure. I wonder how we have one friend, uh, Peter, who mm -hmm. uh, was the ultimate Star Wars fan, mm -hmm. um, and he had like a library of these legends books. Sure. You know? I just wonder, like, when they reset the canon, how he felt about just, that. Like, yeah. On a level of, of one to ten, how upset was he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, no, it, for me, you know, it felt like a jumping in point, you know. Sure, it felt absolutely. like the new 52 or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Which is a DC Comics reboot that mm -hmm. happened, and we started to read some more comics. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yeah, no, like, uh, I felt like it was easier to, like, read the Thrawn series, the mm -hmm. new Thrawn series. I'm like, oh, I don't have to read every book related to this character, even mm -hmm. though there's, like... S legends ones because those aren't canon anymore you know? right yeah that's the, that was another thing that was really nice about fallen order is you know um obviously there's benefit to kind of being like a star wars fan mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily need to be one to oh, enjoy no. your time with the game like um like taggy is not much of a star wars person right but she was able to like in what she had watched of me play it she mm -hmm. was really enjoying the storyline, the world, what was going on. Like, she mm -hmm. was able to get a lot of enjoyment out of that, despite the fact that she's really not that into Star Wars. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's a self-contained story, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it. sure, it, I suppose, I mean, well, almost everybody, well, like, Darth Vader has got to be, like, one of the most recognizable characters in any media. Anything, yeah. But, like, so... But if what if Fallen Order was your first Star Wars media that you <laughs> and you you get to the end and there's just like some new villain and you're like oh that's unsatisfying that like the villain I defeated wasn't like uh, the true final boss and then I got, just got owned by some person mm -hmm. you know but like uh, uh, no I think that's an unrealistic scenario I think right. everybody knows Vader and you know. Just to make one of every like a fan favorite character seem cooler. That's like fan service basically at the at end that of point, the, yes. At the end of uh, Fallen Order, which I you know, I'm happy with. It, exactly. It was... Yeah, no, I mean, you know, when you have like if you have the opportunity to use the Star Wars boogeyman, yeah. like, go for it. And I thought they utilized him right. exceedingly well. You use him sparingly yeah. in a non ridge Tridge in order to uh, exactly. make him seem all the more menacing right? right you know like kind of getting to our you know our uh, final thoughts yeah of the game you know 
I, for as big of a Star Wars fan I am, I have not played an awful lot of Star Wars games. Okay. This one would be head and shoulders like the best. Yeah. You know? But there's still there's Star Wars games that I would have loved to have had the opportunity to play. Like I never got the opportunity to play Knights of the Old Republic, mm-hmm. um, which I'd love to do. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's one of those games where it's old enough now where it might be like feel kind of antiquated to play. I yeah, I did play a few hours of Kotor, as mm-hmm. they call it, mm-hmm. um, and unfortunately, like you said, you know, uh, I, by the time I played it, it was already like. 12 years plus on you sure know. felt almost unplayable it's just like you know how mass effect one has these long areas of like mundane travel mm-hmm. it was much worse than that you know, gotcha so, you know that that was the part that like was r- dragging me down when i played it and just um but you know maybe i'll go back to it and yeah. people liked knights of the old republic 2 even more right you know, so that's I don't know. That's out there. I basically they were very cheap, and I got them for on Steam. So, nice. Uh, they're they're waiting to be played. Possibly never, but <laughs> but they're there. Yeah, yeah. Same with like the uh, the Jedi Outcast games. Mm-hmm. Mo- like the extent to which I played them was basically just the multiplayer. You know, and yeah. that's and that was super fun. Uh, yep, Jedi Two. Or Jedi Academy Two Outcast or whatever, like whatever that. it is, it's uh that game was one of my favorite little GameCube games. Uh, yeah. Back in the sense that I would rent it all the time and play mm-hmm. the multiplayer and just uh, have these sword duels with people. And I guess there was like even an online uh, lobby system for the third game or something that people oh, really? would like have lightsaber duels with. That's and, cool. Yeah. Um, but it's uh the the story mode was kind of wonky in the sense that it starts off as an FPS and you know it's oh like, yeah uh, you're just kind of going through and you're like where's my lightsaber I'm, I'm I want I was Jedi. promised lightsabers yeah, exactly so eh, all in all it's like a it uh, you know you got the classic Battlefront games people yep. might consider that up there with uh, KOTOR and Jedi Fallen Order mm-hmm. but I agree you know I think Fallen Order is my favorite sure. Star Wars game yeah it's a great it's a great Star Wars game and it's a great Star Wars story mm-hmm. so like I mean I definitely feel like you know if you're a Star Wars fan with a PS4 or an Xbox One like give yourself an opportunity like if yeah. you've gotten to the end of this podcast, we have completely spoiled it to you. For That's now. true. <laughs> uh, so you've probably played it, but it, you know, all in all, it's worth playing for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a it's a great game. That it is. What would you rate out of five? We rated Sushima. I'd give it. F- I would give it four and a half. Yeah. Out of five, which I feel like I probably gave Sushima that. That's so funny because I was thinking of giving Sush- the same score I gave Sushima as well. Yeah. Which is 4.25, you know? Yeah. Because it's like outside of, I mean, I can, I give a pass to the whole thing on uh, like some of the bugs. Yeah. You know? Like, because they really did not detract from my experience mm-hmm. playing it. You know, mainly just kind of my thing comes down to Dathomir. Sure. Dathomir and, you know, the Colosseum. You know, mm-hmm. just like two kind of lower points, yeah. you know, in an otherwise just fantastic experience. Yeah, I think the bugs were distracting for me. Sure. Um, but uh, I didn't mind Dathomir. And, you know, I mean, Coliseum was just questionable in the sense of the yeah. story. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I think just, uh, you know, you're... And the loading times, I, you know, you reminded me that that's uh, that was something that would get on your nerves. Oh yeah, time. it's just some some mechanical stuff that kind of mm-hmm. dragged down a, an otherwise pretty great experience. Which yeah. hopefully, again, if they are making a Fallen Order two, mm-hmm. I would think that probably Respawn would have you know the additional budget and time yeah. to probably have that stuff ironed out. Hopefully, have like uh, yeah, no bugs this time. You know, they mm-hmm. launch a new game and. Uh, it's less of a risk, you know, a sequel is always more, uh, you know, is less risky generally yeah. than putting out a new IP like they did with Fallen sure. Order. It'd be interesting though, because so much of what Fallen Order was, you know, was Cal, uh, getting 
you know, his powers and his life back, yeah. you know? So it's like, I, I really don't think at the beginning of Fallen Order 2, they'll be like, all right, Cal, your force powers are locked again. Yeah, right. You're just yeah. like... It's it, not like Samus's beach gear. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't have Cal walking into some lightning tramp or something. Right. Um, so it'd be, it would be really interesting to kind of see what sort of gameplay changes that we would see in a Fallen Order 2. Yeah, I feel like we could easily see a new protagonist, you know. That's yeah, that's um, absolutely possible. But um we you know, you never know. Mm-hmm. Um I'd be happy to see where they go with the next uh the next game. For sure. Uh anything you'd like to add, Jay Space? No, I think we uh I think we covered it. Yeah. Go play Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. That was it's a it's a fun one. It's a it's a yeah fantastic game. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will catch you on the next time with mm-hmm. some uh, some more. How did you like as well as our regular episodes? So. Absolutely, yeah. So until then, have a good few weeks, everyone. We shall right. see you next time. Bye.